Okay. So yesterday I posted two scripts. I was just kind of bored, and I created these two scripts uh, that uh, basically have video games embedded in them. And then I gave it one liner to download that script and run it, and I got a number of comments on it. Uh, in the next video, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, how these scripts work and maybe give some demonstrations. Uh, but just realize that this was just you know me being bored and having fun, and I knew that I could um, embed zip files or other binary files into a shell script. I showed that years ago, self-extracting uh, shell scripts. Um, but I wanted to see if I could create a script that uh, was was able to be posted on something like Pastebin. That was kind of my goal, something that was all plain text, so using base64 rather than embedding the binary file. Uh, and I wasn't sure of the file size limit on Pastebin. I'm sure I could look it up. But I just wanted to see if I could embed some of these old games into a shell script and post the entire thing on uh, Pastebin. So just realize that this was just for fun uh, as I go through these comments. And um, so let's get started with the comments. Like I said, in the next video, I'll talk a little bit more about how these scripts work. So first comment, man, you're a genius. Thank you. Uh, next comment, let's click on here. Next comment, there we go. Can't find the key bindings for A and B buttons. Uh, that would be, on my system, the default was uh, A and Z for Metafin, which is the game emulator that I was using. Um, so A and Z, or sorry, A and S, Z and X were the turbo buttons for A and B. Why would this get pulled? Because in the description of the video I, I mentioned, you know, let's see how long this lasts. The uh, answer is because it's a copyrighted game embedded in a script by a company called Nintendo, who was very aggressive about their copyright uh, powers. Okay. Uh, pretty cool. Thank you. Uh, okay. Works. Have to install DOS to Unix, though, for Ubuntu. It gave the command for installing that. Then run the line in the video description. Yeah, uh, I don't know why I used... Well, I kind of know why I used DOS to Unix, because that's the most... Uh, it's the best way to make sure that uh, things get converted properly. Basically, and I did a video on this not too long ago, with Pastebin, when you download the raw file, it's actually using, uh, I would call them Microsoft New Line Characters, or carriage returns, uh, rather than, than Unix, so it confuses the shell when you try to run them, so you have to convert those. It's kind of annoying. Not all services, like if I put this script up on GitHub, it would uh, automatically have the correct Thing, so I wouldn't even need that Unix. But again, the whole point was putting this on Pastebin. I knew I could put files on GitHub and, and I could embed the binary files, but the point was to see if one of these text services uh, would be able to handle this. Uh, so I just used Pastebin because that's one of the most common used. Uh, also, I didn't want to put this up on my GitHub because, again, I don't want any hits or whatever they do on GitHub. Uh, that's why when I posted it on Pastebin, I didn't post it on my account. I posted it under you know, um, the guest account because uh, I don't want any strikes from my account to get pulled. Um, so, so I used uh, DOS to Unix. You could also use sed or even tr. Uh, all of them are very common commands. Sed and tr are going to be on pretty much every system. DOS to Unix may not, but all those commands are in BusyBox, which is simple enough to install on any system, and it comes pre-installed on most devices, routers, phones, although it might be stripped down, that tool might not be in there. But yeah, uh, I could have used something better than DOS to Unix. But I have had other cases where I need to do something with new line characters, and I've seen said commands, um, and they work in some instances and not others. So I just, again, this was just for fun. Is this safe to run, uh, or is it safe to run a command this way? My response to that was, that's your call, your computer. Someone else said no, which is pretty much my response. If I saw something like this, would I just run that one-liner? No, I don't trust anybody. I would go to Link and look at the script and maybe download the script. Uh, but would I just run that command? No, but a lot of people would. That's the thing. It's your computer. You decide what is safe for your computer, as long as it's your computer and not somebody else's. Here I am waiting for my automated CentOS install, and now I get to wait playing some Mario. So I don't know what system he's running on. This script, if I didn't say it earlier, I did design for Debian. For the most part, it should work on any system, but there it checks for Metafin, the emulator, to be installed as a certain path. If it's not there, then it tries to use apt to install it. So if you're using a system that doesn't have apt, I think I use apt, not apt-get. Apt-get would have been made, get a little more backwards compatible. Uh, but apt to install it. So if you're running CentOS, it won't work. Plus, I quickly looked online, CentOS, or CentOS, depending on how you say it. CentOS, I don't think has Metafin or, uh, was it, FCUX, which is another Nintendo emulator, in their repositories. I've never really used Fedora or CentOS or CentOS. 
Uh, I think I booted a live CD of both of them my first year using Linux uh, 13 years ago. Um, so I obviously, if he's playing Mario right now, he's not on Scent, but he's saying he's installing Scent. Um, but once you have it installed, and I, I'm assuming that's just because Fedora and Scent OS and, and Red Hat are all based for business stuff, so they're not going to have emulators in there. Um, so, yeah. Is it safe to assume, this is the same person as earlier, by the way, is it safe to assume the content of a paste bin will never be modified? My response to that, is it safe to assume anything online will never be modified? I mean, is it safe to assume that when you pull a package down from your package manager repositories that it hasn't changed? Or if you pull something from GitHub, it hasn't changed? So yeah, that's my answer to that is again, this is your call on what you do with your system. Here's someone with a sed command, which I did not try, but I like his idea. He says, then save this as DOS to Unix.sh. I, I wouldn't even do that. I would just, um, I would probably just include the, I mean, his command, I haven't tried that command. Again, I've seen lots of different sed commands for fixing new line characters. Um, uh, but uh, should be able to just put that command in the one-liner and get rid of the DOS box thing, not put his one-liner inside of DOS to Unix. But uh, I like his idea. And then he says, by the way, a is left and S is right on his emulator when he installs it, which is strange because because it should be Metafin, which should be the fault. But I, I think I believe I, I told him uh, I think it's Alt Shift One for Player One, and Alt Shift Two for Player Two. Once you start the game, and that will pop up at the bottom of the screen. You'll see a configuration where you can configure your controls for each player. It'll ask you to hit each key twice for each button on the keypad. And I have found that almost every game emulator for different systems. They have crazy, crazy default control settings, uh, so I always reconfigure them. Uh, but that's how you do that. Uh, you can also go into a config file and change it, but Metafin is very particular about white spaces at the end of lines, so if you're going to edit the config file, keep that in mind. You'll put a command in there, and it'll give you an error on that line. Finally, you realize it's because there's a space at the end of the line that messes things up. But again, I'm pretty sure it was, it was Alt-Shift-F1 for Player 1, Alt-Shift-2 for Player 2, and then you just read, you know, it will say what's A, and you hit that button twice, what's B, hit that button twice, turbo A, turbo B, start, select, up, down, left, right. It's a Nintendo system, so there's not that many buttons to configure. And then again, this guy again, is it safe to assume the content of a tiny roll will never be modified? Okay, let me, let me, let me address this. I try to avoid uh, talking about security too much. One, because I think most things people do for computer security are complete BS. And uh, a lot of things uh, people do, I would never do. Uh, no, it is not safe to assume that the tiny roll will never be modified. But again, it's not safe to assume anything online will never be modified. Um, so that's, that's that. Your computer, you decide what to do, you know? If, and my answer is, when it comes to software, it's like driving a car. You're driving a car and you've got to pull out into traffic. Do you go when you think it's safe or when you know it's safe? You only pull out when you know it's safe, 100%. Same with your computer. What you think you know, you do. You're asking me three times now if you think this is safe? The answer is no. If you're unsure at all that you have to ask, the answer is no. Here's a question. Forget about the tiny URL. Forget about the paste spin. Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Do you know me? Why would you trust me? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Uh, why would you trust some stranger online? I do not know. So forget about the URL. Forget the fact that I'm using Pacement. Do you trust my script? You shouldn't. Go look at the script. Besides the big section in the middle, which is uh, base64, there's probably less than 10 lines of code in the script. Look it over. It's right there in the one-liners, the URL. Go look at it. Don't run the one-liner. Download it. Look at the code and see what it does. So when it comes to, to safe software, I always say there's three things you want to do. Are you getting it from a safe place? Are you getting it from someone you trust, and you're getting in a safe manner. Now, uh, are you getting it from a safe place, Pacebin? Probably not the safest. Could be worse, though. Are you getting it from someone trust? Do you trust me, and do you trust Pacebin? And are you getting a safe manner? Well, uh, I think uh, even the tiny URL is using HTTPS, but then it's forwarding something else. So, so the answer to this in my rule of three, no, it doesn't pass that. I would not run this one-liner um, from somebody else. And I tested it on my system, but that's only right after I posted it. Uh, a year from now, would I, would I trust this one-liner? Only if I checked that it was directing to the right place and my script was still the same. Again, going back to the point of this project, it wasn't even so much the one-liner. It was, can I embed 
a binary file inside a shell script, because the ROM is embedded in the shell script, in a manner that can be posted on a place like Pastebin. That was my point of doing this project. So again, I could have just put the binary file at the bottom of the shell script and then extracted it from there, just like you would a self-extracting uh, shell script, which I've done videos on in the past. But I want something that was all plain text, so I went with the Base64, which actually will make the file bigger, because Base64 is going to be a little bit larger than the binary alternative, at least in my experience. But now it's all plain text, and it can be posted in Pastebin. Again, I don't know Pastebin's limits, but it was enough to fit Mario Brothers, which is probably, I don't, uh, I don't remember the file size, I would guess like 56 kilobytes or something like that. It's just a random number that came to mind. But yeah, um, no, if, if you don't trust it, my, my rule with software, do you trust the person who made it and gave it to you to, if you were had that person here, would you let them sit down at your computer and do stuff without you looking? That's pretty strict, but you should be that strict with your software. That, that's ideal scenario. So, you know, and as far as things changing, it's like as far as security and what people do, a lot of people add PPAs to their repositories. I would not do that. Even if I trust the PPAs, and you're more likely to break something because it's not all maintained by the same project. You're adding a PPA. It may not be compatible with some stuff that you're pulling from other repositories or they might drop support for it. PPAs, no, I would not do that. Uh, a lot of people would pull stuff directly from GitHub. I do that occasionally, but for the most part, it's like now I've got to make sure that I'm trusting the spell. See, when I, when I pull some, most of what I install on my system, I install from the Debian repositories. Do I know the Debian developers? No, but I, I, as best as I can, out of everybody, I trust the Debian uh, developers and their package maintainers to do things as secure as possible. Nothing's perfect. But anytime I start going outside of that, even if I have other trusted sources, the more you add, the more problems you might have as far as compatibility or availability or trustworthy. Um, so you really should limit where you get your, your packages from. And that's one of the reasons I picked Debian over other systems. There are a lot of other systems out there that are good systems, but they don't have the packages that Debian has. And they don't necessarily divide it up into free and non-free software repositories, which is nice as well. Uh, again, I'm going to say this, it's going to upset a lot of people. And there's no against, again, this is what you want to do. Do you trust just anybody? Arch seems like a great system. I have nothing against Arch besides the fact that their repositories aren't as full as the Debian repository. And that's usually when they chime in and say, oh, we have the AUR, the, I don't even know what that stands for, but the trusted uh, user resources. I don't even know. It's something like that. I do not trust that at all. If the software is not, to get into the official repositories, it should be considered stable, which means a lot of different things. Just because a, uh, someone who develops a piece of software says, my software is stable doesn't mean it's stable with the system or the packages that are also on that system. But a lot of things have to be tested before it's considered stable. So it has to be considered stable. And I have to, you know, it has to be uh, from a trustworthy developer. Uh, so if it's not getting, doesn't meet those two requirements, if it meets those two requirements, there was a third requirement I had too. But if it meets those requirements, it should be put into the official repositories. If it's not, I'm asking why is it not in the official repositories? If you trust the software and you trust the person who's making the packages, why is it not going in there? So that tells me that the Arch repositories aren't trusting these packages, in my opinion. Again, I'm not criticizing Arch. Arch seems like an amazing system. They have great documentation that I use even on my Debian system when I try to look up how to do something. But I don't trust the, you know, at that point I might as well just go out and be pulling stuff from GitHub and all these different places. And a lot of people right now are going, there's nothing wrong with doing that, and that's fine. That's fine. So, Yasuti, 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 sorry for butchering your name. You've asked me three times over multiple hours whether I think this is safe. That's up to you. And if you're unsure, then no, it's not. That is the answer. If you are unsure about something, even if it is safe, if you're unsure about something, it's not safe for you. Do not do it. That is my advice to everybody. If you're not sure about pulling out in traffic, you shouldn't. If you're not sure about a piece of software or where it comes from or how you're getting it, don't use it. Don't trust antivirus. I don't trust antivirus. Antivirus is a scam. The only reason you would use antivirus is because you don't trust the software you're downloading and installing. If you don't trust it, scanning it's not going to do anything. 
okay? So again, a little bit of security talk there. Those are my thoughts, my opinions. You might be different on your system. Um, yeah, and you know what? If you're really not sure a lot of times, same with driving. You shouldn't pull out until you're sure, but then sometimes you're behind somebody and there is nobody coming. Nobody coming as far as I can see, maybe a quarter mile down the road. And these people still aren't pulling out, making their right hand turn on red. It's like, okay, now you shouldn't be driving because you're too afraid. You, you're, you're so afraid you don't know when to pull out. Same with software. If you are so afraid of installing software, if you're not sure you should install, but if you're afraid to install anything, which a lot of people are, you need to find someone else to manage your systems for you. Anyway, that's it. Again, in the next video, I'll talk a little bit more about how this these scripts work. Because I did the uh, Mario one. I also did the Pac-Man one. Uh, so check it out. Thanks for watching. As always, I hope that you have a great day.